Imagine that this cube represents the budget for all anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions to 2100 to keep global warming to 2 degrees C above pre-industrial levels, as enshrined in the Paris Agreement. The budget for carbon dioxide only that we are interested in is hidden in there in the grey. So what affects the size of this carbon budget? Firstly, let's look at the time frame we're interested in. Carbon budgets are typically calculated from pre-industrial levels. However, what this means in terms of our start year can actually vary quite significantly and have a big impact on our leftover carbon budget as a result. On top of this, we must also make estimates for how much carbon has been used up to date and then what year our cutoff point is. Once we have determined our timescales, we must outline which greenhouse gas emitting sectors we are interested in. Like the International Energy Agency, Carbon Tracker is interested in the energy sector, which is the largest single source of global anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions. Which means that budgets used in our work exclude emissions from sectors such as the heavy industries or land use and forestry. Thirdly, we must select which greenhouse gases we are interested in. Now, as the name suggests, Carbon Tracker is interested in carbon dioxide, which is the most prevalent greenhouse gas emitted globally. Now, as you can see, a cube has taken shape that is formed of a number of smaller cubes that each represent emissions for different greenhouse gases for different sectors and for different time periods. It is important to note that the size of the overall cube cannot change once the key climate modelling assumptions are chosen. For example, the temperature limit that we are seeking to keep within, the probability of achieving that target, and the assumed climate sensitivity in the model. Everything can change within the cube, however. If a greater budget is given to non-CO2 greenhouse gases, for example, this takes budget from and results in a much smaller budget for CO2 emissions, and vice versa. After taking into consideration all of these factors, we now have our CO2 budget for the energy sector only that keeps within 2 degrees of global warming, such as the 2017 Sustainable Development Scenario from the IEA, which assumes a 50% probability of delivering this outcome. This can now be split up between coal, oil and gas to give an impression of the possible CO2 constraints that could be imposed on demand for these products if policymakers are serious about keeping to the targets in the Paris Agreement. Technological solutions such as carbon capture and storage and net negative emissions technologies could serve to extend the 2C carbon budget and therefore demand for fossil fuels. However, these technologies are unlikely to become commercially viable at scale until the middle of this century, by which point we could be looking at a very different energy and climactic environment. I hope this animation goes some way to outline the key variables at play in the very complex process of estimating carbon budgets so you can use them more effectively in the future.